I recall a time back in the mid-90s when Crash Bandicoot, or at least a guy dressed in a Crash Bandicoot getup, shot a number of less-than-friendly adverts right in Nintendo's parking lot. At the time, said marsupial was synonymous with Sony's upstart platform. How strange was it then, just five years later, to see said marsupial on the GameCube in the Wrath of Cortex? Nothing in this industry is set in stone. Not even Banjo and Kazooie, two of the shining stars of the N64, can remain loyal in the face of big money deals and corporate tomfoolery. And thus, Rare turned the tomfoolery back on itself, crafting an alarmingly postmodern reinterpretation of the hallowed collectathon. Our heroes are depicted, having taken the decades since their creation rather harshly, having succumbed to morbid obesity at the hands of pizza and video games. Can you blame them? Anyway, this same witch from their old games comes back to torment them, and just as they're about to get into a scrum, this dude shows up looking like a self-important game of Pong. He introduces himself as the Lord of Games and proceeds to regulate by pitting the opponents in a race to collect crap. Then he realizes that's all horribly boring, some smack talk is exchanged, and the entire thing turns into a strange cart-based thing. It's the kind of thing some cynical webcomic artist would come up with, but this actually happened. Scrap everything, take away all the shiny moves, give them a truck or a helicopter, or... Heck, let them build their own craft. It's freedom! Well, call it what you will. The construct of the game will feel familiar to most. Enter a world, drive around a bit to get your bearings, find some holographic projection of an NPC, complete a task, and obtain a jigsaw piece. I refuse to call them jiggies out of deference to Will Smith. The more of these you deposit in the big gumball machine looking thing in the middle of town, the more areas unlock, allowing you to collect more and more things. Among these objects are new pieces and designs for your various vehicles, up to and including weapon systems, flotation devices, wings, fuel repositories, and engines. Because even though you don't actually have to connect everything through a drive shaft or concern yourself with questions of power differential, there's still gonna be some sense to it. Like the kind of sense that results in a bird in a backpack wielding a magic wrench while a bear drives a helicopter thing that deposits oversized soda cans in a garbage receptacle filled with copies of Grabbed by the Ghoulies that nobody bought. Obviously. Or this moderately paradoxical level full of the disc of the game itself. And Viva Pinata in a cute little bit of cross promotion. However, no amount of sly winks and backhanded references can compensate for the fact that while the platforming physics are comfortable enough, the actual handling of these craft leaves much to be desired. Especially when there's a psychotic witch on your six and you absolutely positively need to get the hell out of Dodge. Or Showdown City, as it were. Nuts and Bolts doesn't really get down to its namesake, as some might have hoped for in the HD debut of a couple long, dormant superstars. But, as the game invites you during one of its many and lengthy loading screens, if you want the fun divorced from the rather bolted-on driving mechanics, go buy the original on Xbox Live. It's a rather cynical take, but isn't that what you people like? Unabashed cynicism? I thought so. <laughs> 